here to talk to you about my summer art course uh, Scrutiny. My name is Thomas Chessman. Uh, Scrutiny is actually plagiarism detection software. So first, I'd like to actually talk about plagiarism. Plagiarism is actually a big problem in computer science. Um, the fact that we're using it's everywhere. It's everywhere, but especially in computer science, since it's so easy to just copy code, and people feel like they're changing it a lot by changing variable names and moving brackets around that they've actually created something completely new when in fact they've really just copied someone else's work. And it creates a gap in their knowledge. Students that copy huge assignments in CS1 or CS2 get into algorithms or other upper level courses and they're lost. They have no idea what to do for this thing or that. They have holes in their knowledge. And because variable names are for the most part arbitrary, it's a lot harder to detect plagiarism in computer code as opposed to written work where if a sentence has the same words in it, it's the same sentence. So there are already a couple of solutions out there. Um, the first one is JPLAG. It supports Java, C Sharp, a couple different languages. And the way that it tries to detect plagiarism is by looking at the frequency of certain keywords. If, else, else if, that's all I can really gather online, but if you think about it, looking at just a few key words, from program to program, it's bound to be very similar. Not much differentiation of how many if statements you could have, how many else statements. So I don't feel it's the best solution. Uh, it's free for anyone to use, but you have to be a professor or with an institution. You have to actually validate your identity to use the software. They don't want students ever looking at it, using it, trying to use it to get different code or anything of that nature. Um, the next one, which is a really big one, is Stanford's Moss. It's hosted by Stanford. It's free for non-commercial use. Uh, you upload a batch of assignments, and it does comparisons on them, just like JPLAG does. Both of these, it only does comparisons based on what you send it. It doesn't look at anything else you've sent it before. It doesn't look at anything online. It's just what you send it. And Moss operates a lot differently than JPLAG. It actually looks at the structure of the program. It parses it. That's a for loop. That's a bracket. That's a string literal. And it gets into almost sentence structure of the code itself. And it uses that for comparison with the idea that you know your code structure and another person's code structure should be different for the most of your program. And if you have a lot of similarities, then two people probably collab collaborated. And it supports a pretty impressive array of languages pretty much almost anything someone would be teaching in nowadays. Well, where's my project enter in? Well, Scrutiny is based off the same concept as Moss. Uh, it's developed from the same paper that they claim is the underlying of their algorithm. And it will allow not just for comparisons based on what's submitted, um, it will allow for back comparisons. So if you submitted a project in the fall, you can run it against the Springs class. You can do anything like that. and. It'll also allow for ignoring instructor code. So if you hand out you know, a string.h file or anything that you want the students to be able to use, that will hurt them if you're trying to detect plagiarism amongst them. And in addition, it'll be able to have a database for even more code. So two different teachers can share their students' um, IDs, their code, and detect fingerprints. So a, person, a professor is teaching in the fall, professors teaching in the spring, they can check against each other's classes for plagiarism. Along with cross-institution, there's no reason it can't be set up on a server for MIT and Caltech to check for plagiarism amongst their students or any university of that nature. Um, and what languages will support? A lot. Um, in fact, this is only a small portion of what it will support because I can only get this much onto a slide. Um, it's based off a Python library called Pigment, which has support for many, many languages, along with uh, markup languages, Debian config files, and in addition, it has the ability for, if you want support for, say, a language you're developing, go ahead, write Alexa, submit, they'll incorporate it into the project, no worries. It actually gives you a sort of recourse if the program doesn't have the language you particularly want. With the other two, if it doesn't support your language, well, you're out of luck. This, you at least have some sort of solution that you can get it to work. So where is it right now? Well, at the start of the summer, I inherited code from uh, Rob Scriva, 
who had first envisioned this project, and he gave code to basically generate a document's fingerprints, unique IDs for their code fragments. Um, since then, I have developed code to run comparisons against a submitted tar file of tar files so that student submissions can actually be checked against each other, the fingerprints, and then code to generate an HTML file that highlights those similarities. Um, I actually want to show you what it looks uh, like. You can tell who Rob Escriba is. Not many people know about Rob. Uh, Rob Escriba is actually a um, graduate from RPI. He worked in Arcos uh, several summers. He's actually mentoring me on this project, advising it in a lot of ways. He's off at Cornell doing uh, PhD work. Uh, he's a PhD candidate, rather. Um, so here is, assuming it opens, um, two files side by side uh, from two different authors. Um, why won't this zoom out? This is one author showing a bunch of different code, and if you look at it, especially uh, down here, this is actually an actual assignment, and the two, uh, the instructor passed out .h files and a bunch of code, and then the students were free to do other parts. But some parts stand out very, very similar, but that's the instructor code. Other is more subtle. as seen here. Here, this is actually what it will parse out to. Um, if I could zoom out, it would give both side by side, and all the similarities are highlighted. Every code structure that's the same is highlighted. And it gives a fine degree of to show how similar they are. Um, if you look down here, like the .h files themselves are completely highlighted because both students use the same that the instructor gave out. Um, so, with that degree of control, you can actually specify how long you want to look at each code structure, how long you want for matches, how long, how similar they have to be to actually generate output of that nature. So it gives you a lot of control over just what you're comparing and not one size fits all. Um, so, where's it going? Um, by the end of next week, it'll have support for ignoring instructor code so that only code that students writ wrote will be compared against each other. Um, by the end of the 22nd, a functional database will be implemented so that you can have shared code, you can parse extra assignments, you could put Fedora in there and anyone could have their assignments compared against Fedora source code. You could put anything in there that you wanted that you think your students might be tempted to copy from and it would detect it. Uh, by the end of the month, uh, there will be support for working against back code. Anything that you submitted earlier, you can run checks against from here on until you decide that you no longer want it and you delete it off the server. And August will be, for the most part, spent adding support for adding some open source projects to the actual database. Um, anything that seems like it would be a good thing to have in there and in addition, getting it so that it can run on a server so that people can just submit, submit it to the server and run so that you know, a CS department can host it and only the CS department needs it or while still being able to uh, run for an individual that just wants to check their own code or check their little group's code. And are there any questions? Yes? You mentioned that supporting instructor provided uh, header files and such, does it also support template files for actual Yes. Anything the instructor hands out in any sense, it'll just parse it into uh, fingerprints and really examine that file. So anywhere that that code sort of segment shows up in the student code, just gets ignored. That's something the instructor gave. You don't have to worry about it. Anyone else? I have two questions. Um, first one is for the output that you showed. You like you have a side by side comparison with everything highlighted. Uh, have you also considered like giving a statistics report? Because as useful as it is to see what's highlighted, it's also useful to see stats about like how similar things are or something like that. Uh, yes. 
um, that will probably be included a little bit later. It's just a problem of figuring out where to balance how to weigh things because the way where they have one of the same the same ID like the same code fragment is repeated a lot, or if they have a lot of the same code fragments repeated. Do you understand yeah. what I mean? And your other question. Um, so it's it's supporting a wide array of languages, which is really impressive. But say a assignment was given by a professor that says you can run it in any language you want. Would it be able to compare like the code structure of say a C plus plus program to a Java program? Uh, it would. Whether or not that would be a very valid comparison is another story because it actually parses it into the various language constructs right. and different symbols that have different meanings across different languages. So well, it clearly, it would only work for some. Comparison. Yeah, like you, you couldn't compare all languages to each other, but like similar similar languages. Similar language, like if you want like to use C, C++, C++ Java, probably be fine doing that. Yes. Does it support like uh, incomplete code snippets, like the stuff you would find online on websites like Stack Overflow or? or um, or stuff on like online, since it doesn't actually go and try and find any code online. It's anything that the person passes it into as the database. If you want to go online and find incomplete code, you could add to the database. You it could. Can parse snippets of code. It can parse snippets of code. You just tell it what language it's in. It's in. Nice. I mean, if you wanted to copy Wikipedia and Stack Overflow and parse all of that in, <laughs> be my guest. Probably a lot of work, but hey, all the more detection. Probably. What kind of fingerprinting do you use? Is it wrapping in there? Uh, it actually, what it does is it ends up parsing, it ends up tokenizing the code into various tokens and then it does a uh, rabbit miller hashing and then it selects the lowest one in uh, a window that you select what size and then it generates an actual hash value based on that and that constitutes a document's fingerprint. Yes? You think that there might be some way of finding out uh, to differentiate a and, uh, B and C copying from A versus uh, B copying from A and C copying from B? Uh, right now, there really isn't. It's, since it's the main goal is just detecting something, if it finds a match, that person is cheated. Um, for the most part, I feel like it's more important to find out that a student cheated than who, what he took from what individual, so on and so forth. It could be added later if it actually is feasible. Yes? You said it provides some sort of binary response if yes, it's individual cheated or not, or is it just a statistic? I mean, I, I'm it's, wondering how often you get some sort of false positive from the um, system. I mean, coding styles are, I mean, there's limited ways to write. There is, and it's, it's, it depends on how big you set some of the things there. There definitely is a chance for false positives because if you only consider one token at a time, that's you know everyone's going to have a for loop somewhere. Everyone's going to have. What I'm, what I'm considering, uh, I mean, you said you were going to have some sort of database, right? So yeah. if you have some sort of large database, it's inevitable that one person's code will be similar to another. Um, that's where it's a uh, threshold. I mean, everyone's going to have like maybe the same for loop structure and. If they have that and it's repeated a couple times, it won't really hurt all that much. But what it'll actually consider is, on a whole, from all the documents, all the documents in a student submission, all of them it calculates all their fingerprints. And if more than 25% of those are, are similar to something else, that's when it'll do the post-processing of the HTML file. It does have that level, and if you're still concerned, you can actually adjust how Scru scrutinizing it is. Uh, you can select, you know, if you think that only going by five characters, well, five tokens at a time still gives too much room for false positives, you can expand it to 10. And if it has a match of 10, well, the student probably cheated. Even with the whole big thing, if a huge portion is highlighted, yeah, some, something's up. Um, anyone else? 